Hi everyone. I hope you're having a good day. Well, okay. So, um, this weekend we're babysitting my great niece Natalie overnight from yesterday to today. And, uh, so I didn't want her asking for the doll. That didn't work. Anyway, um, so I decided to work on the shoe part. And I got almost all the way done and I realized this shoe is going to be way too big. So, uh, frogged it, rip, 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 <laughs> And, um, I changed the hook size and made it smaller. So, it's looking about right, I think. It'll, it'll go on there correctly. Um, I was worried about this little bow area. Until I looked at the pattern thing, and the pattern thing on the picture seems to show a little bow area where the bottom is not flat. Um, if you ever wonder when you're working in the front loop and leaving the back loop open, what that's for? That's so you can crochet around the back loop as well. Do both. Separate. <laughs> and uh, so I'm getting, I've started the, I did the round where you decrease and I've got two more rounds of same, same, same. And then I think I go switch to single crochet instead of double crochet because some of this is single and some of this is double. And then I'll make some final decreases on the top of the doll, the single crochet. And then I'll go working with the next one. And the pantaloons will be the same color. And the collar for the thing and the tie for the doll. Well, I don't know. Maybe the tie for the doll will be in the doll color. And just make the collar this color. Anyway, so that's that. What I did yesterday. And dropped it in the floor. Drop that in the floor. Oh, let's see if I can reach it. Okay. Got that. This is the doll's dress. I had to learn a new stitch. And if you want me to, I can try to show you how. But I'm not good at making tutorials. And I don't know how to split a video on path. And I don't know how to come up close to, to what you need to see. But this is the cluster stitch. And now the cluster stitch is kind of similar to the bobble stitch. Except for you don't single crochet right in the next one and push it out. So you go, you chain. This one starts with a chain. And on, starts with a chain. In, in this case, instead of four or five, you're doing only three. And then you chain it. And then you... In the previous round, you you skip a stitch and chain, and you leave yourself a little hole. You go into that little hole, but you don't want to go through the the main stitch part that was free on the bottom. You go through the side, um, so that you have that stitch still remaining for the next round, and and then you chain immediately after that, and you don't. And, and then go back like you did with the, the first one. You chain three on the first one to go into the first chain. And then with this other one, after you've made the middle, you chain three and you go back into the first chain. And then when you're done, you go back into, after you make sure you skip five of the stitches and you go into the next one in a single crochet and start that all over again until you've done three. Because you leave three. And so it looks like a little flower. And uh, it was really cute. I think on the first one I did, and I might be showing you it backwards. I might be showing you the last one. The, the little flower don't want to lay flat. But that was my learning curve. It took me a couple of trials and errors on this to get it correct. Because I'd never heard of what there's this pattern calls for. This pattern says cluster group. And I never done that. And I don't think there's a I don't think there's a tutorial out there for this pattern in that precious moments thing. And this is how many more rounds I got to go. Now I was worried that the clothes might not fit the doll because if I did the same hook because I was worried that this yarn was thinner than that one. So I went up a hook size. I don't think it's anything. I think it's about the same. No, it's maybe a fraction thinner. And I don't know 
if I'm making this too big, I tried it on the doll. It seemed okay. I haven't got the sleeves made. It has sleeves you crochet into it. And I haven't got that made yet. And I haven't gone all the way down. Now I'm going to I'm gonna start trying it on the doll after a little bit. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to pick this thing back up that I dropped the sock. Put it aside. Because that's what I'm crocheting them all here so the little one doesn't say, I want this one, I want this one. Sorry you're asking for it. But I told her her doll's going to have pink hair. I'm making this for her cousin Josie. And I'm making a doll for her. Her doll will have pink hair because her mommy likes to dye her hair. Josie's the one with the blonde hair. All three of my nieces, um, Stephanie, Amanda, and Katie, um, Stephanie only has two little boys. They've got blonde hair too. And um, Ella has our hair color, which is brown. My sister Becky has brown hair, but her husband had at the time. She, they're divorced, and she remarried and is a widow. Or she's a widow. Um, now he passed away at a young age but um, and she recently went through a little bit of grief where she got to talk to somebody else whose husband had passed away and so that was good for her I'd wanted to go with them to Denny's but I didn't get to but anyway I had been looking forward to seeing her more than anything I had plans I was gonna make her muffins I was I had pumpkin and a pumpkin muffin thing and an orange and I was thought well, hmm, what should I do I've already opened the can of pumpkins and made pumpkin waffles last weekend didn't this weekend because a little one Natalie were watching um I just didn't want to go through that trouble um and I thought well maybe there's another chance to use that pumpkin and make pumpkin muffins instead of making pumpkin waffles but anyway it was interesting making pumpkin waffles now, um, Josie's hair is blonde. Her sister Ella's is darker, um, like mine. Not as dark as mine, kind of like a sandy brown, more like my brother's. And my brother didn't have as dark a brown, almost ready brown like mine. Um, I'm 57 and I haven't gone gray yet. I don't dye my hair. I had an aunt that used to love to dye her hair black, jet black, <laughs> but she passed away. Um, my dad had six sisters and one brother, and uh, so, you know, some of them went through stages of dying hair. Some of them, I didn't know, and my mom had two sisters, which she still does, and one brother, and her brother passed away. Her brother had juvenile diabetes. Now, um, so... Let's go back on to the topic. The doll. I had to find a solution. I trimmed the hair. I knew I needed to spray starch it to make this hair not be a wild little going wild. After I put glue, I was so worried about the knots coming undone. I wanted to glue each of the layers of the strings that I tied on. Next doll, I might, if I don't do the knot on top if I decide not to do a bun knot that the pattern calls for it wasn't so easy um, but anyway I decided well how can I get this doll to stand up for that you know the head to stand up it's heavy it's top heavy it won't stay up really good unless you're holding it you would have to have it in a special doll metal thingy I don't got one of them so I got a bucket and it said to plaster wrap the doll. Well, it's easy to plaster wrap the body of the doll. And you ended up putting the legs up and plastic wrapping the, uh, the legs together and sticking it in a Cool Whip bucket. I mean, empty Cool Whip bowl that was clean and stuff, you know. Reuse things. Recycle. This one's now going to be for spray starching dolls. Hmm? Because, you know, it needs something when you're spray starching it. And it needed to be spray starched. Now, the downside is, I was going to unwrap it for you. I was going to show you a doll with dry hair. Guess what? The bangs are dry. 
but not the other part of the end of the hair. I know I'm not a good um, hairstylist. I'm not a good hairstylist. I'm not going to worry about it. It's it is what it is. This is good. See the plastic wrap. <laughs> I plastic wrapped it and put it inside. I'm standing up now. And you can see me next video with my clothes on. There's, maybe I'll go ahead and take the plastic off everything and put her back inside the bowl. Okay, well, let me carefully. I'm getting my hands. It's just damp. It's not going to drip all over the doll. Plastic wrap together. Easiest one to come off. Not as easy to come off. Yeah, I really went to town with it. Perhaps I should save this plastic wrap for the next doll. Smooth it down. Here's what she looks like. The directions said to cut the bangs on the bottom layer lower, higher up, and then eighth of the inch each layer lower down, going down, down. And that's what I did. And I measured it so that I would hit it right at the top of the eyes like the picture showed. Um, because there's a picture in the book. <clears throat> so she's going back into this bowl. Her legs are going to have to come back up. Yeah. And her arms are going to have to go in. And I'm going to come down underneath and get this yarn that's trying to go with her. So it hangs straight because she's, the tips are still wet. Oh, Okay, there we go. No more plastic wrap. Bye-bye. See you next time fully clothed. Or partially clothed, depending on what I got. Because I don't know if, I, I don't know if I'll have the dress and the, shoes and the pantaloons and all that fun stuff finished by Tuesday because uh, I take Moe's in today after breakfast and um, after that I start feeling yeah, headache so anyway I'm gonna let her dry am I thinking of not showing off that dress was hoping that if out of sight out of mind Little one wouldn't ask for the doll. Little one was already asking for the doll. It's not hers. It's her cousin's doll. Hers will be pink haired. I have plenty of pink yarn. Is why I came up with pink. Um, during the summer, my niece Katie first dyed her Natalie's hair pink, and then she dyed it purple. I don't have enough purple yarn for purple hair, so I decided on pink. And so Natalie's little doll will have pink hair. And uh, as I go about this, I will start figuring out how to have less wastage of yarn and um, how to trim it better as I get more practice and how to do the eyes better, embroider it. This is the first, <coughs> this is the first doll that I actually embroidered the eyes on. I'm quite proud of myself. You can tell that one is looking bigger than the other and I didn't want to go within on the pattern. The mouth was the same color as the um, as the doll but I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted it to be a little different colored than the dolls. I wanted you to be able to see it better but I made it straight rather than my typical up, 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 down. I made it straight and uh, she looks like she's just not happy but she's just a doll she can be happy with a relaxed face she's content let's put it that way content yeah and so this is the first doll I'm gonna have to start working on some things next that are smaller and make sure that I have enough for Christmas presents just in case because I don't think I'll have three dolls finished by Christmas. 
No, I'm just in case. Mm, definitely wouldn't have four, nor five. So, we shall see. It's taken a month and a half to finish this doll. Hmm. For me, anyway. I'm not a fast crocheter. And I'm enjoying um, what I'm doing now. I... Uh, where is it? Right there it is. All right. So, I made an experiment. Now, this is plastic. It's a prim and it's plastic. If you see an Amazon ad online for prim and it says it's aluminum, don't believe it. It's plastic. They're all plastic. So this probably comes from Australia, though. This is where Prim comes from, I think. I added the silicone beads. And I had ordered... This is a strange thing. I had ordered some number beads that were 15 millimeter. And I was excited to get them. But they were coming between the 5th and the 15th. And the, the tracking on it always said, picked up by carrier, carrier received package, things like that. Nothing ever gave yeah, there. I knew it was coming from China by the tracking number. And so, on the 16th, I finally received the package of it. Because I was about ready to ask for my money back. And, did it come from China? Was China mentioned on the label anywhere at all? No. It came from California. Hmm. I never, I never really saw where it was traveling, like I do most of other packages that's coming to me. This didn't come to me until the day after it was due to arrive to me, and I hadn't canceled it. So I got them, and uh, these are bigger. They fit. They cushion my hand a little bit. This one's signifying the size of hook. Now there was only numbers. Not letters. I don't know if they have any out there with letters on them that would be the same size as the 15 millimeter hooks. But so this one here that I had received before I have to do. I'm recording this and I think it looks backwards right now while recording but when it it when it's on the video and playing it'll probably look correct. Anyway I have it on the end. And for the e-hook, this is the one. It's the Susan Bates I was enjoying using. I'm using this size for the doll dress. Then I switched to this size. A 3 millimeter is the same size I'm using on my lighted crochet hook. I wanted to be able to change this out if I needed to. And then I wanted to experiment to see how how these felt in my hand. They feel good in my hand. I like them. They're, they're about the same they're silicone about the same size as this thing and this has got a rubber silicone around it but this one's a little bit it's they're firm they're not super squishy but they feel good in your hand um and so that is the one hack i don't know if it's hack i don't know where it come from I saw a YouTube video of someone telling about doing that for beads and necklaces and putting it on crochet hooks. And I thought, let me try that so that I can use these little stick crochet hooks again. Because when the past, before I got this thing, my hands would cramp really bad. The odd thing is that I, I crochet in a left-handed manner and I hold the yarn with this hand and this is the wrist that would hurt holding the yarn. I don't know why, but I would really badly. I choke up on it. I'm a knife holder. And, you know, crochet it. Knife holder. Grab the yarn with your finger. Yep, yep. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Sometimes push it. Hmm. If it's double crochet and the yarn isn't cooperating, white yarn works better for me. It's a little lighter. It's a different brand. The pink yarn is line brand, and I love line brand. But 
sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to crochet with but the colors are worth it anyway I'm going to go ahead and get off of here and go fix my breakfast and uh, so I'm going to say bye please like and subscribe and comment below come on I need some comments um, so comment below subscribe I need to grow my, my subscribers please and I'm sorry if I don't have good lighting I don't have software where I can splice things together and I have that light behind me and uh, so when the air conditioner is on it would make too much noise and it's right beside me but when that light is turned on by the light switch by the way it's all automatically on unless the light switch is off but it creates a backlight so I didn't want to have a backlight this one's a little bit of backlight but it's more of a side light so that's not so bad uh, but I don't want a backlight I don't want to backlight the, 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 the video um, and so anyway so that's off it's cloudy it's raining it's not really a sunshiny day outside or there would be a little bit more light in this room because I have the door open. And I don't feel the need to turn the air conditioner on today. It's cool enough. Yay. And it's not cool enough for me to wear a long sleeve shirt. Not yet. Anyway, okay, so bye now. Comment. Like. Subscribe. Please. Please, please. <laughs>